So today we're going to be working on making a bucket for my Cub Cadet loader project, uh, or more specifically, the brackets that go on the back of the bucket to mount it to the loader. So I went down and uh, visited my local uh, sheet metal shop and had him bend me up uh, the back side of a bucket and got some more pieces to the bucket. And then I took some end plates and I brought those home and plasma cut those out to fit the sides. And then I weld it all together and put the uh, reinforcement square on the top and added some wear bars on the bottom and on the sides and tacked on the end plates and then put it over in front of my tractor with was at this point only one arm loader arm on so that I can start uh, mocking up the brackets on the end. So I ended up sticking the uh, bucket on its end and and I set a uh, reference measurement on it so that I can scale this off when I load this picture into Fusion 360 so I can trace the bucket shape. And so I uh, just took two points on the on the curve and and then measured across until I got an even increment to make it easier to scale it. And I chose two points. I used a 10 and a half inch and a 15 inch, but I ended up using a 15 when I got to the in the fusion. You'll see that later. And then I laid the bucket back. Was when the bucket was on the ground, I kind of positioned the lift arms and the dump cylinder as to about where I would want them to be. And then just real quickly, you can tell by my crayon looking pencil, I just sketch it out real quick on my phone and just what the, uh, the measurements are for the pivot points. And then I also measured the angle at which point I, I thought the bucket would sit and I wanted to have a little bit of a an angle on it so I could tilt it back to hold the bucket in place, you know, so I could have hold the scoop of a little bit of material and, and, and lift it or scoop it into itself. So I didn't really want it flat. I wanted to have a little bit of tilt back and then obviously it'll tilt forward to dump. So I loaded those uh, files into Fusion 360. Uh, here's uh, Fusion 360 when I'm doing the work. So I just started a new document. I usually work in metric and this point I set the units to standard so I can uh, work on it. Uh, here I'm placing the uh, canvas image in the background and uh, setting the angle which I already calculated so that the uh, bucket is going to lay um, according to where my measurements were off a level surface. And so I got the angle all set and I, I just did the math ahead of time and placed it. And now I'm going to scale the, uh, the 15 inches on it and calibrate the, the canvas to what I want. So I'm going to zoom in and grab one corner of the bucket along that line and then go to the other side and pick that point as well. And then the entry box is off screen, but you should put in 15 inches. And then, uh, so now my, my, uh, my uh, canvas is scaled. Here I'm just testing the, the other dimension on it to see how close it was. So I grabbed, uh, I just drew a line on this canvas across the other direction and hopefully I get about 10 and a half inches to there to there and you can see that it's just, just barely under 14, so, or 10 and a half, so just where it needs to be. So then I 
at this point, I'm going to trace the back side of the bucket. Uh, I'm going to create a three point circle. I just pick two points on the, the circle, on the bucket circle. And then I'll place the third point uh, once I can drag the, the curve to match. And since we did this on the rollers, we got a pretty good curve, but you, at the ends, it doesn't get quite uh, exact because the roll stop. You know, we're not doing a full roll on it, and we uh, so we're a little shy. So here I'm just uh, drawing the vertical. This is where I'm going to butt up the end of the uh, bracket onto that corner. So I want an edge, and here's where the flat part of the bucket is. At the bottom, so I'm gonna. You'll see that I'm gonna draw a uh, draw a line here, a flat line, as to where the end of the um, flat of the bucket is. And it's pretty coincidental to where I drew my uh, 15 inch line. So, but that's entirely a coincidence. Uh, then I'm gonna draw a line perpendicular. To the line that I just drew, uh, three eighths of an inch down, because I'm going to put a piece of plate in between the the bracket that I'm designing now and the cutting edge, so it has a bit of a wear surface, but also just to tie some of that heavier steel around to the front, so that when I really push on it, it's not really so pushing on the eighth inch bucket; it's going to be pushing on the on the heavier steel. And here I'm just trying to fit the uh, curve to match the bucket a little better. I'm just going to pick a tangent point here, pick the end of the plane up the vertical line there, and then pick a, a good match curve. And I just kind of fine tunes the, the end like I was saying before. So now I, I know my uh, my measurements that I had before that you saw on my pencil in line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the, the ground and the, the ground line, which is what the bucket was setting on in the garage. So I'll take this from the bottom of the curve and drag this out and just scale a little bit to get the longer line. And then I'll draw a uh, vertical line as well off the back of the bucket because that's one of the other measurement points I measured from. And once again, just, it wasn't the exact measurement, so I'm just kind of picking close to where it was and then drag this down vertical down to the beyond to the bottom line there. Just making sure I'm getting the, per the vertical and not the, or the perpendicular line and not just the tangent or closest close line. So now I'm just going to try to lay out those two uh, pivot points. I'll grab this corner here and I know that one pivot point was uh, Four and a half inches high by three inches deep, so I just do a rectangle of that dimension. And I was not where I would want to grab it from the other corner here. So I'll do it a rectangle from the bottom corner. We'll grab the wrong corner. Uh, and then go up 11 and 5 eighths and over two and a half. And I'll put my uh, holes and put an inch and a half holes in here. 
so that I can, this is where my bushings are going to go for my pivot points. And I'm just uh, making a larger uh, center diameter on that as well, off, a circle off that center, uh, just to get the back side of my uh, shape of my brackets. And I just decided to make it a half inch bigger than the outside of the, uh, the bushing. And then I'll draw a line from the outside and I try to grab the other end of it being uh, tangent, and then I'll come up and use the constraint tool after and and make that line fall uh, tangent to the other circle. And I'll draw a line off the bottom of the top as well. Now here's where I, I want to draw another circle. This is going to be my 3 8 uh, thickness on the bottom. And I'm going to tie into my blades and I'll draw a line from here to that tangent on that circle as well. And then dress the other end to match on the tangent point. And I'll draw the top line. Come off the top of the uh, bucket brace and onto a tangent point there. And then there I have my bucket design. And at this point, I'm just going to turn into a 3D image. And I'm going to collect all of the uh, the uh, portions of the shape. And you got to be careful so when you're zoomed out, you might miss some of these little tiny spots like this one. So you just zoom in and get those little ones. And then you can just kind of trace yourself around. See, there's another one up here. And click, add that to the collection. You can see I missed the, purposely missed the inner diameter up there. And then I'll extrude this out. Uh, I think I put three eighths of an inch, but in reality, I'm going to have this cut out of uh, just quarter inch plate. It'd be plenty. I mean, two of these brackets for arms, that's a total of half inch of material. It's pretty rugged, I think. And to turn the layer off, and there's the uh, part that you've drawn. And then you can um, export this as a DXF. And I'll send it to my buddy, who was going to use his CNC plasma cutter and cut the shapes out for me. So this allows me to get perfectly aligned uh, center holes for all the points, you know, for the hinge points, and uh, obviously a lot of cutting and fabrication. A lot, a lot easier to have him cut these intricate shapes. And we'll show us how we do some of that. And here's where I had Marcus and Metalwork cut the bucket brackets out on his plasma table. This is so select to be able to cut these parts out like this. They're perfect. Everyone's exactly matches the other one. And you have nice uniform parts. And uh, this allowed me to uh, weld the bucket brackets onto the bucket. You have them all lined up perfect and just fit the bucket into the brackets and uh, tack weld it in place. And then took it off the tractor and fully seam welded everything. And then uh, it's all together.
and thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a little something, and I uh, encourage you to go out and garage and do some work on your own.